I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. I'll read you the final segment of today's show. Boy, it was information, if not action-packed. Uh, lots of great content, lots of great da- uh, guests. And we continue that with Dr. Lee Fleet. And she is with uh, an interesting uh, uh, medical tourism destination. Uh, the MedExpertChili.com is the website. And uh, let me give that one more time medexpertchili.com, but it's called, that's what it's actually called, Med Expert Chili, and it's, it's actually a spa there, and uh, I'm, I'm really delighted to have uh, Dr. Lee uh, Bleak with us. How are you today? I'm doing very well, Kevin. Thank you for having me, and I also have a medical practice in the U.S., in Texas and Arizona. So awesome, awesome. Check me and out uh, we're actually going to talk, uh, you know, we've got a, a topic in, in particular we were going to uh, uh, focus on, which is Rubio's immigration plan. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about what you're doing in medical tourism. Kind of give us an, a little understanding of your, your clinic. Okay, well, it's not a clinic. We, have, uh, we work with different hospitals. So we're happy to talk with you about that. Yeah, so real quickly, just tell, to tell us all you do over there at uh, your uh, facility in Chile. Which for the listener out there, you know, I think there's a, I, I think there's U.S. has ethnocentrism, and we kind of treat Latin America as all the same and as developed, you know, developing and not developed. Where Chile is actually one of the most developed countries in the Western Hemisphere. It's one of the most advanced countries in the Western Hemisphere, and uh, has been for decades. And so. Uh, it's interesting to uh, hear about what you're doing there. Well, Chile has first world medical care with facilities in the private sector that would rival the Mayo Clinic and some of the top facilities in Houston, for example. And not only that, but tied in with my subject today on the some of the medical issues related to the immigration issue, the Chilean hospitals in Santiago in the private sector typically have infection rates for surgical procedures that are around 1% and the U.S. average is around 4.5%. So we're looking at facilities that are state-of-the-art, first world, 60% lower cost than the United States and lower infection and complication rates. So our company was started in order to help patients, vet the hospitals, vet the doctors, determine the the best place for procedures when people are dealing with serious adverse effects of the healthcare changes in the U.S. that have led to rising costs, higher deductibles, and fewer approvals for various procedures. So we are a physician-founded and physician-led company where everything has medical oversight to be sure that patients get what they need. Yeah. Talk to me about your concerns. You know, Marco Rubio is certainly of the GOP candidates, regardless of his rhetorical statements now, certainly one of the uh, most progressive, if you will, uh, and I don't mean that as a compliment, uh, when it comes to immigration uh, policy. Uh, talk about why that should be a concern from a health care perspective. Well, and you, Kevin, I'm glad you asked because none of the presidential candidates are really addressing adequately the serious medical risk when we're dealing with such a huge increase in the numbers of people being allowed into the United States, both those that are coming under the refugee status and those that are coming illegally across the border. And we've just had a recent stand-down order in Arizona and and Texas as well so that the Border Patrol is not stopping those coming illegally. And the focus is on security as it should be, and the focus is on legality. But what they're not talking about are the invisible travelers that come with the human bodies. These are bacteria like tuberculosis, And the drug-resistant form is the most common now in other parts of the world from which these 
uh, immigrants are coming. Viruses, the the um, respiratory virus. ED-68 that killed so many U.S. children in 2014 came in with the flood of Central American immigration across the southern borders. And those people were transported to various cities around the U.S. And we tracked the outbreaks of those respiratory viruses and they were correlating with the cities where the busloads of illegals had been taken. Yeah. And yet let no one was you. talking about that. Yeah, let me ask you a question. You know, I think about the... Illnesses, the bacteria, the drug-resistant tuberculosis, and, and then you've got the skin parasites and intestinal parasites, for example, leishmaniasis or the flesh-eating disease that's widespread in Syria is is carried on the skin, and the immigrants are not screened medically yeah. like they were in the whole process that was originally set up at Ellis Island, The and under the current CDC guidelines, which are not being followed, the medical screening is very specific about what needs to be checked and ruled out, and if it's present, they're not allowed in. But that's not. I need to. I need to ask you a question, and we're running out of time. Forgive me, but I'm interested. I, I just thought about this even while you were talking. Even the the Homo Zeta uh, virus uh, with the mosquitoes. Now that they're saying that it looks like it may be sexually transmitted, even that should be a part of the immigration debate, shouldn't it? Absolutely, and well, not only that. Think about Ebola. We've known for years that Ebola remains active in the semen for up to seven weeks or longer after the person recovers, and you know the death rate is quite high with Ebola. So that sexually transmission of Ebola has already been shown, and that was one of the reasons it spread so fast in Africa. The truckers, it was, it was spreading along the trucking routes, and the truckers would have sex on their long trucking journey. So Very interesting conversation. There's a lot of this that isn't being talked about, which is why Rubio's, more open border stance in his opening up the immigration without addressing these issues really concerns me because it, it means that there are longer waits for American citizens to get medical care because all of these immigrants are being offered free medical care through Medicaid at taxpayer expense. Well, the ERs are already flooded. There are already long waits. There are already difficulties getting doctors and specialists for Medicaid patients. And we're not taking care of our American citizens first, and we're adding more burden to the system. Yeah, there's a great saying, you know, the more you subsidize something, the more you get of it. And we are subsidizing exactly. people that are really destroying our health care system, our economic system, and so many other things. And so it's a great conversation. What's the best website for people to go to to get more information? More information on the health care issues are, are really good articles at www.aaps online.org and my medical website is herplace.com and, and I think can with me on oh, go ahead. At health and sense Dr. Vleet I appreciate so much you being with us Dr. Lee Vleet MD and a great conversation today really appreciate terrific, it terrific Kevin have a great day you want to remind the listener of the best content here, including this interview, will be found over there at usdailyreview.com. And you're listening to The Price of Business. Have a great day. Spin it wisely on this station.